keep hearing concern about the cost of the services I recommend on the channel, in particular for low budget teams trying to spin up side projects, small apps, and all sorts of things, saying it's cheaper to use AWS directly and not to use the tech that I recommend. And that's fine. You're wrong in three ways. And I want to talk about those. So let's do it. The first one is how long you can get away with the free tier for. Almost all the services I recommend have a very, very generous free tier like disgustingly generous. I've not shipped a service to date that doesn't fit within Vercel's free tier, even the stuff y'all spam when I post it. PlanetScale's free tier gives you a billion row reads a month and 10 million row writes a month for free. And when you upgrade to the $30 a month plan, that becomes 100 billion reads and 50 million writes. And do you wanna know how much it costs if you somehow go over? $1 per billion reads afterwards, and $1.50 per million writes thereafter. That's insane. Planet Scale is effectively free. You're billed on how many databases you host, not on your reads and writes. It's insane how cheap Planet Scale is. When you scale your databases properly, they become cheap, and they're passing the cost savings on because they can make their money on the enterprise scale. Planet Scale doesn't win based on how much margin they make on their servers per compute. They win based on how much they can upsell you on the additional features and developer experience that they provide. They found a technical win and they scale a developer experience on top. And the result is just really, really hard to beat. And if we look at the other services that I recommend, stuff like Clerk, the pricing is very similar to other professional solutions like Auth0. They have a hobby tier, 25 bucks a month, that isn't limited to the 5,000 monthly active users of the free tier. Yes, that's right. No credit card, unlimited sign-ins, but up to 5,000 users can exist in a given month. And they have pricing for overage. Yeah, included monthly active users. They're active if they've visited. And then it's two cents for each additional user at the hobby tier. Five cents for the business tier because they have a bunch of additional features integrated. And they have obviously discounts if you do like big business stuff. Each additional employee that you have working inside of the clerk dashboard is an additional 20 bucks, but you probably don't need too many of those because you can just share the environment variables and everyone's good to go. It's pretty cheap. Like your free tier window is massive and the rest is super cheap as well. The same goes for Upstash and Axiom. I don't need to go into all the details of all of these. The point I'm trying to make is very specifically, the free tier carries you really far. So what are these other two points? The next one I wanna focus in on is how expensive you are. It's easy for us as engineers to think of our time as cheap because it's ours and we can spend it however we want. But when it comes to stuff like setting up CI and CD correctly or connecting your database and setting up your PG mounter to handle serverless traffic, the types of problems I dealt with when I was using AWS myself took time to solve. Sometimes days, sometimes weeks, always including a lot of maintenance long-term. And the amount of time I have lost setting up PG bouncers, switching databases between platforms, figuring out how apps sync or amplify and all these other things work and trying to get CI, CD linked to GitHub properly is insane. We're, we're talking hundreds upon hundreds of hours and whether or not I like to admit it, that's expensive. And if I'm doing that for a company, that's more expensive. There is a benefit here, job security. If I have all of this effort I've put into setting everything up and now I have this complex setup that we rely on, if I then decide to leave, they're gonna have to put a lot of work into finding a replacement who can maintain whatever chaos I have set up there. If the benefit there is a few less cents a month per whatever, depends on how many whatevers there are before that number matters. Other streams have talked about the line of prime, the point at which a service is stable enough in its feature set and trafficked enough in its usage patterns where it makes sense to rewrite it in a stable self-hosted thing to really try and minimize cost. But most of us are very far from that point, even y'all working at big companies, because most code is changing and the cost of change is high. I would venture to bet that the majority of the companies y'all work at, it would be more expensive for the company to pay you to build Vercel's developer experience than to pay Vercel to use their existing experience. And the same goes for everything we recommend on this channel. These tools save real amounts of time and that time might not be valuable to you in your head as a developer, but for me, 
It's a team lead and a person who runs companies and also invests in companies. It's important to understand how valuable your engineer's time is so that your engineers can use that time in things that drive unique business differentiators. Your engineers should be spending time making your product better for your users so you can beat your competition, not making your AWS cheaper so that you can feel good about yourself and your job security at night as you're paid 200K a year to save the company a hundred bucks a month. But we're not even at the most important thing. These services actually save money. I'm not talking time saved money. I'm not talking free tier money. I'm talking the actual benefits of these services allow you to build things that run at cheaper costs. The first thing is scale to zero. You're not paying for compute you're not using. If you set up your Kubernetes and your Terraform and everything correctly, you can minimize how much compute you're paying for that goes unused. But if you're spinning up servers, then you're running servers. And if you're running servers, you're paying for compute that isn't being used. Period. New services like Vercel and Planet Scale, you're not paying when the month ends, you're paying when the users use the service. And that billing mechanism makes it much easier to flex your costs based on usage of every single part of what you're building. It is significantly easier to scale your pricing based on the scale of your application rather than spinning up things and letting them sit and paying for a bunch of servers you're not actually using. On top of that, you can save a ton of compute using things like Vercel's cache primitives and incremental static regeneration, only actually computing on the server when things have changed or on planet scale using the database JS package to hit their HTTP endpoint instead of making a SQL connection, meaning you can avoid setting up pools and bouncers and all these other things you normally have to set up to maintain your connection to your database. You can just hit it from an edge function and edge functions are hilariously cheap. Like let's just go look at Vercel's pricing quick. Vercel's edge pricing on the pro tier is 65 cents per million invocations. That means every million times your edge function runs, it costs you 65 cents. And it only runs if it doesn't have data in the cache already. So if you're caching your responses and you're only invalidating them on user requests or specifically interactions, like I'm only gonna update the posts on my profile on Twitter when I make a new post, then every other request is hitting a cache and not actually running compute at all. It's so much cheaper to cache a response than to run a server that processes every single request, like comically so. And setting up your caching and your CDN and all that stuff correctly goes back into the second category of cost savings where you're paying your engineers a lot of money to get that all set up and maintained correctly. The benefit of Vercel and PlanetScale and Clerk and Axiom and Upstash and all the other T3 deploy partners who are not paying me to make this video to be very, very clear the reason I recommended them before they paid me is because they saved me time, money, and energy, and they made it faster for me to develop the right solution for my users at every scale I've ever worked at. And I feel like when y'all say these things are too expensive, you don't actually see where the cost is. So I hope this is helpful in y'all having a slightly better understanding of why these services are indeed cheaper than your AWS-based alternatives. And if you're hosting your own backends and you're hosting your own services, you better have a damn good reason because you are costing more money the vast majority of the time. I hope this was helpful. I've been holding this rant in for a while and I think it shows with how it came out. Let me know what you thought about it. I'm, I'm gonna love the comment section on this one, I'm sure. If you wanna hear more about all the info I use and recommend, I'll pin that video right here. I put a lot of effort into that one, so please check it out. Thank you as always. Peace, nerds.